Food is an electromagnetic barcode. So think about the food that you buy in a supermarket, it's got a barcode there. If that barcode is not working, the person at checkout is not gonna understand what food that is or what the price is, and they're gonna call someone. Now again, food actually has that built in it. It's built in its hydrocarbons. So it's hydrogen and carbon bonds basically in the food. Hello and welcome to Sweet Liberation. And we're super excited today because we have with us a nutritional health coach and expert, Ryan Carter. Thank you so much for coming on Sweet Liberation today. And Ryan, we're so excited to have you here. Thank you for letting me come on. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So whereabouts in the world are you right now, Ryan? I'm in Nicaragua, which is a country in Central America, just above Costa Rica, below Honduras. Amazing. Right. Well, fellow Latin American here, so after my own heart, I'm over with our, my Latino people. Fantastic. <laughs> How long have you been over there? On and off, three and a half years. But in cent in Central America, generally around like five years. Oh, wow. fantastic, fantastic! So, um, tell us about the work that you are doing around nutrition, and you know that our bugbear over here at Sweet Liberation is um the story of sugar and what uh harm that is playing people's health, um, and we are have been so blessed to be interviewing amazing people like you around the world, uh, just to sort of understand a bit better for our audience. What is going on with health right now and, and how we can make an impact? Hey, Sweet Liberation viewers and listeners, we're really excited about an event that we've got coming up, the three-day sugar-free challenge. We're really excited about it because we're going to be able to give you all the tools that you need on your sugar-free journey. So with that said, love you and leave you for now and back to the episode. So tell us a bit your journey into health coaching. How did it all start? Tell us about that. Well, I'll give you the short story because again, we're, we'll probably be t uh, go over time here. But I mean, I was struggling with my health for a number of years. I, I explored many options, obviously the conventional route, which maybe some of your audience has experienced that, just been saying it's all in your head. And then basically just decided enough is enough and explored more of a functional holistic side of things, worked with a few nutritionists, trying to understand what's going on in my body. Essentially, it was an accumulation of everything. It's not just one root cause, which is a lot of people in the functional medicine space make out to be. It's, it's the mercury. It's, it's purely just the sugar, which we can touch upon later, or it's this and that. It's a collection of things. And my system basically just broke. There was no flow, no coherence. My battery was flat. And again, even working with the experience of these nutritionists and, and coaches out there, again, no one actually understood the whole connection, the integrated approach. There were specialists in certain things, whether it's guts, whether it's detoxification, whether it's the heavy metal things, whether it's just exercise. So again, it was this like fascination with like, wow, this is such an in like integrative machine, the human body as such, and just exploring it, reading about it. And then I was like, I've, I've got to leave my work. My work was actually a contributing factor to my health. So it was a family business, an antique shop in Portobello Road, kind of famous. And I just had to leave because it was in a water damaged building. There was a lot of mold around. And it was just like actually a perfect opportunity to change career paths. And I became or well, studied for four years to become a nutritional therapist. And then from there, just wet my appetite and just learned, done the further courses, personal trainer, just many, many, many qualifications to actually build this sort of integrative model of health, very decentralized. So not functional medicine per se, although there's some good things, not conventional. Obviously there's good things with emergency medicine and stuff when needed. But again, it's a, it's an understanding about empowering you, empowering the, the audience, my clients basically about you are a doctor. There's a doctor inside here. And my role as a nutritional therapist is to give you the tools and the appropriate information and wisdom to action in your daily lives in the short term, medium term, and long term. And understand how your health is a bit like your bank account. It's there for you. We should acquire health and then it's our lives to live. And whether that is, I don't know, if you want to enjoy some Hagendars on a weekend or if you want to enjoy your holiday to the Caribbean or whatever it is. 
your health is there to flex. It's not there to be scared. It's not there to sort of be a snowflake or wrapped up in cotton wool. But again, from where we are or where, where I was or where people, my clients are at the start, we can't do that. We can't flex our health. We have to acquire it. We have to charge up our battery. We have to build our savings. And that's basically what I, I teach and empower my clients around the world. Amazing. Right. That's amazing. Amazing. So you're an inspirational coach and uh, as well, you're really helping people to tap deep, not just on the physical side, but it sounds to me like you are going much, much deeper in the work that you do. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm forever learning. Uh, if you want to like, if you like the term like learning, unlearning, relearning. So again, always evolving. So my, my way of thinking or my approach is, is in every, never like a protocol set. It's never eat X amount of carbs or sugars. It, it, it's, it's completely different to different individuals, depending even on their location. I.e., what I would be eating in a Kabakwa is going to be radically different to what you'd be eating in Cardiff, as an example. Amazing. And what, and what is the nutrition like in yes. Central America? Tell us about that. Well, here specifically in Nicaragua. So again, there's... If, if you look at a country like Mexico, it's very different, the different regions. So again, even the actual differences in the regions is actually not just going to be a Mexican diet. It's going to vary tremendously depending on altitude or where you are closely to the sea or rivers, et cetera, et cetera. But again, here where I am in Nicaragua, it's, it's plantains, bananas, dragon fruit, watermelons, again, so much plants. And for them, it's, there's a little bit of grains or legumes like gallo pinto, which is rice and beans. It's their typical dish. There's some cheese. There's some eggs. But again, here, we also see the Western society influencing their food choices. So again, now in a local supermarket, hardly anything is actually real food anymore. But the real food is in the streets. The real food is like in the vendors selling out in the markets. So again, that's the same issues that you have in the UK is still here in the, uh, in Nicaragua with vegetable oils and just basically the tainting of food or the added sugars into everything, basically. Um, so again, they still have the same problem, but the, the problem here is they're just not as educated as folks are in the UK. So for them, they, they actually just get smashed to pieces with this, this nutrition issue. Um, but again, their natural diet is is beautiful basically it's the, it's the foods that you're likely crave if you're in the uk it's the mangoes the tropical fruit but me personally i don't really go too too far with that i keep it still kind of like british based in my approach so again a lot of meats a lot of fish um i don't like chew on butter like the fat but again, i don't shy away from fat per se and again i just complement it with a few vegetables and plants for me again it's just very simple food. It's it's not really like a masterpiece from like Gordon Ramsay uh, in a kitchen. It's again, like my breakfast this morning was maybe like egg, scrambled eggs in I think butter or coconut oil, plantains in some coconut oil, some cheese. And uh, yeah, and that was it. That That's just my breakfast. And then I'm good basically for like to like three o'clock in the afternoon, basically. I'm salivating. Yeah. I'm salivating. Do you get that lovely crumbly uh el queso blanco that kind of crumbly yeah crumbly. yeah but so again it's just like super super dry it would be like a dry feta cheese even if you think that's not possible but again it's just like super super dry and super super salty now again i don't have control of their salt or what they use so again maybe there's a bit of unfortunate bit of fluoridation in there but again my health like i said from the get-go i'm not there to be a snowflake again if there's a tiny tiny little bit of an issue my health is in a good place not to worry about it. But again, I mean, if I could, I would make my own cheese and make sure it's obviously using the best salt possible. Um, but again, it's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting cheese because they're not used to like blue cheeses, soft cheeses. For them, it's pretty detest. It's horrible. They're like that. They like the hard stuff. Nah, amazing. Yeah. I'm salivating because I'm thinking of that combination of the sweet and the salty with the plantain. Yeah. Uh, Good. That like a good one of the things you, well, I was just going to ask you, actually, you mentioned just now, do you recommend different diets then, depending on altitude? You mentioned about Ooh. the high low, a level and the low level. Is, is that yeah, oh, what? 100%. So again, on the first principle of understanding your metabolism, you require oxygen to make energy. So when you're at altitude, you probably know that you have to do probably training to improve your aerobic capacity of handling that low oxygen environment. So again, Altitude will have a big factor. I wouldn't say it's the biggest thing. I would say latitude is the biggest factor. So again, 
the difference between living in Cardiff, Edinburgh, or compared to like living like in, in San Juan del Sur in Nicaragua is going to be tremendous. Again, like the 50th latitude compared to the 11th. Again, there's sun pumping here all year round. That changes my metabolism compared to when it's like gray, cold, when the UVB goes away. And just the abundance and also the duration of light. So the light cycles throughout the year. This is actually a key critical in, uh, uh, key concept to truly understand about your response to, to sugar, your response to carbohydrates. So again, there's a reason why fundamentally fruits, like what I just mentioned, grow here. And there's a connection between if I'm living here, if I'm thriving here, that food's on my doorstep. Now, again, if you apply that, so where you are, maybe in Cardiff, London, Edinburgh, what's growing? Is there a banana tree there? Is there plantains? Again, is there avocados? Now, again, it doesn't mean these foods are bad or good. That's very much like baby talk, and I don't believe in that. But again, for me, there's a real like true common sense. Like, how is it possible that we think that food that we should eat daily? It, again, there's a big disconnection there. But again, like it, it's very hard for most people in the UK to truly understand that. And it's now obviously influenced by society or culture where again, like we get the eat well plate. And again, there's like whole vegetables all year round, there's fruits, you got to eat your five fruit a day and all this kind of stuff. So again, it gets very complex when you say there's a bit more nuance than what the government or even some nutritionists put out there. Now, again, I wouldn't say the effects are like getting smashed in the face or punched or something, but again, it's, it's actually, on this fundamental principle of understanding the biology, food is an electromagnetic barcode. So think about the food that you buy in a supermarket. It's got a barcode there. If that barcode is not working, the person at checkout is not going to understand what food that is or what the price is, and they're going to call someone. Now, again, food actually has that built in it. It's built in its hydrocarbons. So it's hydrogen and carbon bonds, basically, in the food. Now, your mitochondria, which metabolizes protein, fat, and carbs, it is, again, an amazing organelle. It's the most important, or one of the most important organelles of our body to truly understand. It's where oxygen comes in, which we just discussed about altitude. Um, and again, it can actually sense the lowest scales, the quantum physics sort of, bi of our biology, basically. So it knows the difference, essentially, between a banana and say wild salmon it's not basically based on calories per se although we love to use that which again has its whole conversation to go into but again on on, the, on this food from the, the latitude perspective your your mitochondria basically metabolize this and as it metabolizes it it actually creates a light show okay it creates light release within your mitochondria and in your cell and again there's different light releases from eating a plantain compared to eating, say, salmon growing in Scotland, uh, uh, swimming around in Scotland. And again, we know there's a difference between the fat ratios and stuff like that. But again, it would also be the equivalent of a carbohydrate source, such as an apple or a potato. The potato grown in the UK would be very different from a potato grown here, or like I said, a planting grown here. They're not the same thing. There's a barcode buried inside the food, and your mitochondria strip that off and then release this light when we're producing energy and they know this. So that's the real problem and the context that we need to apply. It's always about personalized nutrition. And there's no one diet plan. Mm -hmm. Again, there's no like calories you should be eating this day for this day. There's no like, it's not set. Uh, and again, in hindsight, if your environment is, is trash, meaning you're indoors all day, you're, you're stuck in an office, you don't go outside, you don't get sunlight on your skin or through your eyes you're directly making yourself insulin resistant or altering your blood glucose or altering how you utilize fatty acids. So again, there's, there's so much context, but on the surface, the advice is really simple. It's basically to eat your local food that's growing in your farmer's market and go outside in the morning and a few times a day, not wearing sunglasses. And again, maybe take some clothes off when, when it's appropriate. But again, even then, I would say it's appropriate to do it even when it's cold in the UK. You need to be doing it all year round. And it's even more important, the irony, of doing it more when it's cold. Amazing. Amazing. I'm not, I mean, that just mind blows stuff. And um, as you're saying that, 
I'm just thinking of all the um, amazing uh, wisdom. I mean, uh, that that is past. It's been it's been lost with our kind of uh, modern lifestyle of people being detached from their communities and their traditions. And I'm just thinking, this is my abuelita's wisdom. That my... <laughs> well, again, we're, we're, we're disattached from everything. We're dis disattached to our bodies. We're disattached to our feelings. We're disattached to, to, to everything. Again, we need to question this as a society. Uh, or again, as an individual first. And then we can make roads to sort of group thinking, family thinking, community, and then broaden that basically. But again, it always starts with ourselves. We have to be in the best health, again, mentally, physically, emotionally, to, to improve ourselves first before we even think about improving others, essentially. We need to practice what we preach. We need to have skin in a game. And again, I mean, that that's the key thing about what I do and maybe why so many people resonate with me is because literally I, I do this day in, day out. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I live in Nicaragua because I'm all for the light and the understanding of the environment shaping my biology. And again, that's one of the reasons why, again, I, I, I actually have a baby who's half Nicaraguan now. So again, it's one of the reasons I wanted to bring her up in this type of environment because it's not as disconnected as the Western world, because I want her to know where her food's from, uh, food comes from. I want to know the materials used in her home. I want to know that, that this type of wood on the table is from her back garden and animals and and everything basically be able to milk a cow all these type of principles that again your mine or your grandfather uh, grandparents or great grandparents would have been practicing in the uk we've now outsourced that to the government to think for us to tell us that okay this 70 grams of carbohydrates is is what you should be eating or whatever it is we need to question that because again it's based on mediocre it's based on obviously our general population which is obese and inflamed essentially with rising chronic neolithic diseases that there's no answer for and again like there's no one root cause answer per se it's a collection of everything how we're living how we're thinking how we're being all over it, it has to be like a radical life change alongside our nutrition to really change um, our trajectory and again like even like questioning about like and what you're, you're going crazy or going all caught up in carbohydrates or glucose tracking but again at the end of the day what what are you trying to hope to achieve what is actually the goal in that what's the goal in you wanting to shred some fat what how are you going to feel what, what, again understanding the actual goal buried inside of that what is the actual emotional connection with this um because again that's when you truly understand your true self and then you can build the identity and have an easier go about like when you're changing your food choices. Because again, if you do it on the whim, okay, I'm just gonna optimize my glue fasted, uh, my my continuous CGM monitor, basically. Again, like that's just gonna be a, a, a basically like a, um, a honeymoon. It's gonna be short lived. And then you're gonna go into the next thing with tracking your ketones. Or again, it's just gonna be going on like tracking your calories. That's not an ideal medium long-term route uh, or a direction of improving and optimizing your health. And that's what I'm all about in myself, but also empowering people to understand. Amazing. That's amazing. That's, that's opened up so many ideas. And I had no idea about, you know, you're saying about the different fruits in different parts of the world. Of course, it makes yeah. total sense. But I don't fancy the uh, taking my clothes off in uh, Wales. <laughs> why, but, 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 but why not? I mean... Again, yeah. it would it would actually make you more metabolically efficient. Now, again, I, yeah. it's obviously going to be cold. It's going to be windy. You're not going to want to do it at the start. But again, it's not like you're going to be taking your kit off and doing it like for for eight hours a day. Again, True. just especially in the summer, the summer's the time to practice sunlight exposure. Right at the start of it. Again, if you actually want to do cold exposure, you need to again to be doing it in the summer when the weather is more favorable. So again, people jumping in like ice baths, again, yeah. you doing it in the winter is going to be very hard. You do it in the summer when the water outside in nature is going to be cooler and, and, and warmer, more easier. And the same thing with taking off your clothes. Again, your body adapts to this. Again, it's like anything is a stressor. Food is a stressor. You eat too much food for your body to metabolize, that's a stressor. You eat too much carbohydrates, that's a stressor. Too much fat, stressor. 
everything is, can be seen as a stressor, same thing for cold therapy and going working out, which we know is very helpful for your health. But again, it's about making the small steps, starting with the small steps. And again, maybe that's you doing, taking no clothes off and then take it like wearing shorts. You just yeah. exposing your legs is going to be a big difference. And again, right. when you can track it and see, I'm spending more time outside and I notice I metabolize carbohydrates much better. I'm not getting a hypoglycemia response. Or again, your actually food cravings would reduce and you wouldn't need to count calories. And that's actually connected with our biology. There's actually a a protein in our body called POMC, pro-opiomelicortin hormone that regulates our metabolism and our hunger and appetite, but it's actually connected to UV light exposure. Now, again, if you listen to conventional medicine or just any health professional out there, they're going to tell you to avoid the sun at all costs and be covered up and, and wear sunglasses. But this directly, um, this directly, um, what's the word? This directly invalidates how your metabolism or physiology runs. You're now blocking your body with this protein, which influences your genes to, to actually reduce your hunger and improve your, your thermogenesis, basically, within your metabolism. So you can actually utilize fat. Now, again, the connection here is, is when you're indoors all day, you don't go outside, you're always going to be hungry. So it's fighting basically this losing battle with counting calories. And it's never going to work out because your body is smarter than, than what we actually think. We think we're always smarter than nature or how we've basically been created by the universe or God or whatever you want to believe. But again, it's just it's just a complete disrespect and, and not a true understanding because we think we understand our health and we haven't got a like, clue. And I'm still learning this stuff. Indeed. Do you, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, mind blown. All the things that we, we've been actually doing over the last few weeks is sort of coming together. And uh, do you think, are you, are you, are, do you think happiness has a part, a part to play? Feeling happy and uh, being more in tune with how you're feeling and the foods and nutrition that we're taking in that then impacts the lifestyle, that impacts our hormone balance. What do you think about that? 100%, but it comes back down to the chicken or the egg, which one came first. I believe it's truly happiness is basically a within job, self-love, basically. If you love yourself, you're going to be more happiness and you're going to be more giving out that love as well. So like I said, food actually has light buried in it. Humans have light within ourselves as well. We emit light. You know, when someone has got good energy, there's something that your vibe attracts to another person's vibe. And there's like this unison coherent energy that's called entanglement basically mm -hmm. and our heart our brain our hands and feet release the most heat in our body and there's a reason why we shake hands there's a really there's a reason why we kiss there's a reason why we look in people's eyes there's a really reason why we hug and put go heart to heart and again you can even make the connection here without going into too to craziness even with like sexual activity there's actually a connection light release there so again, if you're not emitting good light based on your metabolism and physiology, it's going to be very hard to be happy and, and have that self-love. And it's sort of connected back down to dopamine levels, which again is just a representation of good health at the end of the day. So again, it, it comes back down to your health to be happy. You, you, you're not going to find someone who's, again, you can find them, but you again, you're not going to find someone who's like, doesn't love their body. Who, who doesn't produce good energy, who's somewhat slightly inflamed, although that's like using a general term, or who's got gut distress, or who's, who's dealing with blood glucose dysregulation, they're going to have a harder job to be happy. But again, it's all, like I said, a chicken and the egg. We do need to practice. We do need to learn and experience it. Well, again, we now need to do these things like meditation, where before we could be naturally at peace. Now it's a, actually a battle to find peace. And to understand what peace is or understand what silence is. Uh, it's again to get reconnected with ourselves and our feelings. Because like I said previously, society and our culture has basically nulled us from that, essentially. They, they've taken that away. They've ripped out our heart. Because again, the happiness and love is basically what the world needs to heal itself. And what we need to heal our bodies with all the like stuff that we're facing in our modern world. Amazing. Amazing. Do you know what? We get a ticket to Nicaragua. Yeah, so they should. <laughs> well, again, I mean, oh, again, I mean, it, it, it definitely helps to be in a good environment. Like I said, if you go outside in the UK, 
And again, you're, you're talking to someone who's born and bred in the UK, who's embraced the UK for a number of years with good health before coming out here to Nicaragua. It's not just created in Nicaragua. Again, I'm more or less the same person I am I was in like when I was living in Norfolk before moving out here for two years in this little cottage in the countryside. But again, it's the environment literally would influence how you become happy. Again, going out in sunlight would literally just change your transporters and receptors to serotonin. And like you're probably aware, serotonin is like this happy hormone. That's not always the case. There is some context around that because there's seven different types of receptors of serotonin. But again, in general view, again, more serotonin, more happiness. Okay. But again, it's also connected with dopamine. How well do you feel inside yourself, your desire, your drive? And again, that's going to be very self-rewarding. Now people go self-rewarding, diving into haagen or Ben & Jerry's to make them feel good. And again, that is problematic. And even I would say maybe like the healthy indulgences, again, whether it's like filled with like almond butter or dates and stuff like that. Again, I would say if you really have phenomenal health, you don't need to use food as a medium to feel happy. It should be coming from within because again, it's self-love. And again, it's not because you... I can't eat that date because again, it's from, from, from this country or blah, blah, blah. It's got this too much sugar or stuff like that. No, I don't want to eat date because I don't need to have that happy hit from a date. I'm at peace with myself. I've got so much else going on in my life. I don't need to be thinking about food to feel happy from. But again, I'm not here to say that food doesn't create happiness. It does. It's a massive connection. And even part of this new venture that I've started called O Foods, which is basically a, a, a food company integrating organ meats into hamburgers or uh, minced beef or sausages food is a very uniting experience but again it's not the pure and only thing where we should get happiness from if that makes sense that is true that is very very true although i'm just thinking about all the big fiestas we have in latin america i'm i'm half venezuelan half argentinian so nearly all of our celebrations <laughs> revolve around food yeah but but the thing that it revolves around people and dancing and music and sharing stories families laughter it's yeah. not purely like okay cool it's just about the food again it, it's more than that again like christmas dinner now again i mean it's all centered around the food and maybe just the tv show it, it, i'm you know, obviously making assumptions on some people and the general but like I, I, I would I wouldn't think it's really a big chinwag no more. It's not really a gathering and, and telling stories around the fire, or again maybe it's not as much family as before. So again, it is it's changed. But again, the Latin America culture is crazy about these traditions and family lives. Basically, it's insane. And again, it's eye opening to experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah true. Well, they know like... they, they know how to party down down here. Yeah, <laughs> we, 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 the Latin Americans and Latinos everywhere certainly do. Everyone, ev everyone listening who's Latin Americans, going amen to that. <laughs> and, 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 and they typically know their limits with alcohol. And again, I think from the UK society, it's just again just looking at football culture. They just don't know when to stop. Basically, they don't know when to use alcohol as like a lubricant for social activity. They take it too far, and then obviously it just goes goes down from that but again that requires like we just said self-love to know that it requires health when to say you know what i'm all good here i don't need more i'm just enjoying the moment i don't need to go over and feel like crap the next day or or, or anything else basically or make a fool of myself and or regret anything essentially um sure. but again it's an inside job and it always comes back down to health to facilitate that yeah Mm. Yeah, and so where, how people that are watching the podcast? I mean, how how do they? Uh, or, or what is it that you you do? With it? Do you have a course that people can yeah. connect yeah. you? I mean, tell us about how they link hook up with you. So I'm purely one to one coaching. Oh, right. Um, so the courses, I I do think they are gone way out of control with some health prof like health professionals now, and like, uh, again, it's just a bit. OTT, in my opinion. Again, what I'm sharing, it can obviously be made out into a course, but again, it's not personal. I'm all about personalization and I like that one-to-one -one connection with my clients. Mm -hmm. And again, that's what they pay me for. Um, again, maybe one day there'll be a course, maybe one day there'll be a book, but to be honest with you, I'm not going to do anything that I don't really enjoy or like. And luckily I'm in a position of, of, of influence or power to be able to, to do that. 
Um, but again, I mean, I, I work one to one with clients. Or again, if you want and enjoy this kind of stuff, there's like other podcasts. There's obviously my social media platforms to get a taste of this. Um, what else is there? But again, I, like I said, I've started up a food company called O Foods that's in the UK and available. Um, so again, I'm, I'm a big part of that and putting a lot of energy into that. And again, maybe one day in Nicaragua, I'll have a sort of um, some land to rent out some like casitas or villas where people can actually immerse themselves. And just again, like either like come see me, um, like work with me and get that real life experience or just come to Nicaragua for a holiday and be looked after and taken care of my, my land and property basically. So that's likely down the works in like three years time. Um, but again, that, that, that's the, that, that's what I'm creating out here basically. Um, and again, for, for people who are interested in this, because again, this, this, this perspective of health is, is, is not really shared out there. It, it, it's, it's really challenging. It's challenging your norms. But again, it has to, like, only people are really to, ready to explore this would, would maybe find this information kind of interesting and make you think like, okay, yeah, avocado. Yeah. It's typically grown in Central America, but again, I live in the UK, maybe, maybe put some connections there. But like I said, it's not like it's going to be causing an offense with your health straight away or the one off. But again, like, you know, there's people with massive food sensitivities and people who respond with things such as food maps or lectins or oxalates. And again, maybe there's the reason why, because that food is actually not local to you, as an example. Um, but again, that, that, that's where people can find out more, but it's, it's really one-to-one -one coaching and that can be found on my website, levite.com, or again, just communicated, message me on, on social media. Wonderful. What a fountain of information and I love your energy your vibe and your insight, really talking and putting things into context that people can understand mm. the kind of, um, you know, the food issues that people are suffering these days and uh, physical health and uh, emotional mental health that's associated with all of these things that are we're kind of living that fragmented life and you put it beautifully in a way that people can understand and really sort of think and tap into yeah. maybe, uh, some yeah. other ways of living their yeah. life. For sure. Again, I, I mean, I just want to reiterate, like, again, uh, just highlight, again, I think people do make very good intentions around trying to change their health. Again, whether that's with one of the things that I shared with watching their carb intake or counting calories or going to the gym, doing cardio there. Again, it's there's good intentions. People want to change their health. Again, unfortunately, it is just conflicted with how our physiology or biology works in what we're doing based on first principles. So again, we just need to shift and understand and move our intentions and more well-placed or more personalized to a certain degree. Because again, general health guidelines, they're not there for you. They're there for the majority and just look outside the window, or open up the door, get some light in your face when you open it up and just look outside. The majority of people, they're taking many medications. And again, that's nothing to be ashamed about, but it is what it is. They're having multiple conditions being told in, uh, distilled into them. They're not able to be mobile. Their memory's going. They're, they're overweight or obese. Just look out the window. And that is something that you are aspiring to by using the general recommendations. So again, I would just question that general. You don't want to be normal. You want to be optimal. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so, so much, Ryan. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on Sweet Liberation today. Are there any last words of wisdom you want to leave our audience with? And I'm sure that they will be connecting with you. And I'm looking forward to that Nicaragua retreat. Let yeah. us know about that. <laughs> well, it, it, it's not like a group retreat. It'll be there open forever, whoever, whenever you want to come out here, basically. But again, I mean, <laughs> but, but, but um, I, I would just say like small steps. You don't have to go crazy with your health. Again, I've cultivated my health from the bottom up and it's it's taken like 10 years. And even now I'm like still experiencing better and better, better health. And even though I'm getting older and older and older. So again, there's no rush. There's no finish line. Your health is priceless. It's the best investment that you can make. And again, just be easy and calm and, and practice and understand self-love and it's an inside job first. 
and then like we can change the world. Exactly. Thank you, so much. Thank yeah. you so much for your Please. wonderful words, mm. your inspiration, your positivity, mm. your very good energy that's coming all the way here, yeah. even to us in the UK. And we look forward to having you back. I hope you'll come back to Sweet Liberation so, for updates. And I'm sure um, right underneath this podcast, people will have all the links to keep up with you mm. and uh, and to try and maybe some of your uh, amazing things that you're selling here in the UK. We'll certainly be checking that out. So with that thank said, you so much. thank you so much, Ryan Carter, for being our guest today on Sweet Liberation. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.